Greetings, y'all. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Wanted to hop on and share some reflections that was on my mind this a.m. Before I get started, I want to um, say that uh, Sunday motivation and meditation will begin again next Sunday, April 17th, I think is the date. Um, we will have a special peace, peace, y'all. We will have a special meditation in honor of what is being what what is celebrated commonly as Easter, so we will have uh, a special meditation for that. I will be discussing the deeper meaning or the metaphysical meaning of Easter, and we will have a special meditation, and that will begin our um, Sunday motivation and meditations again. Some of you all have reached out. I know, I know, I've been like. Uh, I've been kind of incognito on Sundays. Y'all like, where's the meditations? But, um, you know, Spirit led me to just pause for a few Sundays. And so, you know, I just followed the guidance. And uh, so I'm excited to reconvene with you all next Sunday, April the 17th. Again, um, we will be uh, discussing the metaphysical or deeper meaning of Easter. And... Um, vibing on that and also doing a special meditation for that. I wanted to hop on here today to uh, talk about um, this, this, I don't know if you all have heard about it or heard this term being used. It's been used for years, but a lot of people are using this term now, the new earth, you know. Um, you also hear the term like new world order and all of those type of things, but new earth is what I desire to discuss today. So, um, you know, the notion of new earth is that, you know, it is a new day and age, you know, uh, people are thinking differently, functioning differently. Um, the old does not apply anymore. It's like out with the old and it's a new day. Um, and on the positive side of things, the new, if considered to be positive side of things, the new earth uh, is a time and space in eternity where consciousness is lifted. More and more people are gaining deeper understanding of life, deeper understanding of living, a deeper understanding of God, deeper understanding of divinity. And um, because of this, many are experiencing a new experience here in this physical plane. And uh, and um, this newness brings about um, healing and elevation and prosperity and abundance and breakthroughs and all of these different type of things. On the flip side, what many would call a negative side, um, many are not wanting to accept the new earth. And so because of this lack of acceptance, there's a great fall. There's a great decline. Um, and so, you know, um, there's this choice that individuals have whether they are going to. It's, 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 it's a choice and oftentimes the choice is difficult to be aware of because of individual state of being, uh, state of consciousness, and where they have found themselves in their being. And so, um, there is a choice, but many don't know that there's this choice or don't feel like there's a choice. And so, because they don't know it, don't feel like it, it's not in their consciousness, then they don't experience this freedom of choice to experience this new earth. I hope I'm clear. Am I clear? How's my sound, by the way? So we're in this dynamic right now. <laughs> That's where we are. <laughs> we're in this notion of new earth. <laughs> um, and we are, we are at this cross world road where you have a choice on whether you experience the new earth or you experience the great decline. And I have been for a minute saying, especially after the conjunction, I have been saying, man, this feels like what I remember from the Bible, like, you know, getting caught up to meet them in the air, 
or being left behind, you know, in this like turmoil. Um, it's, it feels so much like that scripture or that story in the Bible, you know, being caught up to meet him in the air, divinity, air being like uh, intuition, intellect, uh, divine intellect, uh, higher mind, air, uh, or being left behind, carnal mind, earthbound mind. And with the shift of age into air age and the age of Aquarius and this whole shift that the earth that's happening in the earth and in the cosmos, um, which I'm not going to go into here. Like I suggest that you like get a little verse. I'm not saying become a whole astrologist or anything, but at least get to understand the cosmos at least a little bit. But with this shift happening cosmically and a shift happening down above and below, you know, there's a shift happening in consciousness because <laughs> as there are shifts happening above and below, us in the middle, we are impacted. And the main thing that in, that it, uh, is impacted is our mindset, consciousness, and our feelings. We are predominantly made of water. Um, a shift in our chemistry, the way our chemistry flows in our body, the water flows in our body, our, our body flows with the level of water in different forms, but either way, it's all still water. And that causes a shift in chemistry in our bodies, which causes a shift in chemistry in the way, in, in our consciousness, as well as in our, uh, emotions, as well as in our in our uh, thought processes and therefore in our lives because our consciousness creates our reality. So nonetheless, let me get to clear word because I pray that this comes as a clear word. In my reflection this AM as I'm think as I'm just reflecting about some different things that I'm reading and I was just, you know, prayerful about. Um, it is when you shift, the reason why new earth is so real and the reason why I urge people to consider this whole notion of we are rising, you know, new earth is literally rising like we're in it, is just notice how there's a shift in consciousness happening. There's two things that as I'm reflecting this AM, I was thinking about. There's a great shift in consciousness where more and more people are becoming aware of themselves as a living, breathing being uh that is impacted by the unseen more than more than more so the the seen that there's this greater power whatever it's called you know we don't have to get into that but that's there's this greater power there's this sense that that many has called the sixth sense there's this sixth sense about life that uh if you pay attention to it it can lead and guide you it can really have a great impact in your life a lot of people are experiencing that a lot of people are experiencing awareness of spirit. A lot of people are going into wanting to understand spirituality. Um, a lot of people are shifting their consciousness around wellness and health. Uh, they're more so accepting that your wellness is not just about the physical. It's also about the emotional. It's also about the spiritual. Uh, more and more people are getting op becoming open to therapy and becoming open to coaching and all these type of things that only certain populations used to do. And they did it from childhood. You know, by age two or three, their child had a, a private therapist or counselor or coach or something like that. Only big business corporations had personal coaches and all of these type of things. Now it's common. It's common. It's common for people to want to process their emotions and feel better and work through so they don't have to sit in depression all the time and keep on this roller coaster of depression all their lives. It's coming now. There's a shift in consciousness happening. It's very apparent. It's very present. Um, more and more people are being more open to learning about different spiritual modalities. More and more people are saying, hey, I don't, I'm not saying I'm I, I, I'm going to throw away religion, but I'm just saying, I feel like it sh it's a little bit more to this. Like maybe I don't have to throw away religion, but I feel like maybe I need to learn more about spirituality. More and more people are doing that all ages. I'm experiencing it. You know, um, um, more and more people are getting into meditation. More and more people are getting to divinations and readings. More and more people are just, it's a shift in consciousness happening. 
Okay, I think the point, my point is getting across, right? So now because of a shift in consciousness, if you understand spiritual science or energetic science or or the science of consciousness or the, 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 the laws of manifestation, the laws of the universe, when there's a shift in consciousness, there becomes a shift in reality because your reality is directly linked to your consciousness. And so if there's this great shift in consciousness, then there's going to be a great shift in creation, in, in reality. Thus, new earth. And so the more and more people have a shift in consciousness, one of the biggest shift in consciousness is, is the fact that my dependency shouldn't be on something or someone outside of me. Something that people were thrust into this reality when the pandemic hit. I cannot depend on the job. I cannot depend on the medical system. I cannot depend on the government. I cannot depend on any of these things. It is a must for me to figure out how I can depend on something more than that or something greater than that or something higher than that. Is it myself? Can I depend on myself? Well, I don't know. Well, I can't. Well, is it? A lot of people are led to depend upon that thing we call faith, that thing we call God, that thing we call spirit. Many people during that great disruption is what I'm calling it, began to be to remember, began to remember what they are as spiritual beings. So that's one shift in consciousness is it is a must for us to understand we cannot depend our supply, our supply for our beingness absolutely cannot sustainably depend upon something outside of ourselves or someone outside of ourselves, period. There has to be a, a greater dependency on something, a, a dependency on something greater that will bring to us, attract to us, lead us to those things that we need for our, uh, to, to live and to thrive and to be. So that was one shift in consciousness. The other shift in consciousness was this thing we call wellness. Many began to see that wellness is not just the physical body, it's the spiritual body, it's the emotional body, and we can, again, not depend on anybody outside of ourselves to help us to stay well. That's another shift in consciousness. We maybe can't depend on this, metal, this thing we call our medical system. Uh, our medical system seems a little scary right now seems a little flaky seems a little like i can't really depend on them to keep me alive to keep me alive maybe maybe this whole notion that the medical system is a capitalistic system just to you know make money off of our our vessels our temples maybe that's some truth in that you know because it seems you know so i won't go too deep into that but many are seeing that maybe i need to learn how to take care of myself maybe i need to learn how to take care of myself naturally Maybe these medicines that they've been given many, many of our generations for years, they go in, go, go in for a checkup and they end up on 13 medicine, meds by, within a six-month period. Maybe there's something wrong with that. Maybe there's a problem with dialysis clinics popping up on every corner. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe I, maybe something needs to change. So a lot of people are, that's a shift in consciousness when it comes to that. I've noticed because of the work that I do that many, many more are coming in asking how do I um, deal with certain things naturally. So there's a shift in consciousness opening people up to, to, to maintain their wellness naturally. Okay. Then the other shift in consciousness right now I think is I think individuals are becoming less afraid. They're realizing after dealing with so much strife and struggle in the last past several years and not only surviving it, but thriving through it, conquering, overcoming greatly. So fear is being dismantled in many. Now, remember, I said at the beginning, there's a flip side to it. So, of course, there's the other side of the coin, 
where there's this great um this great desperation for something outside of yourself to take care of you and there's this compliance to anything that's given just as long as you take care of me long as you tell me what i need to hear long as you tell me that i i'm okay long as you tell me i'm protected whatever you need to do whatever i need to do i'll submit my body i'll submit my mind i'll submit my time i'll submit my money i'll submit whatever it is just tell me it's gonna be all right just tell me i ain't gonna die just tell me <laughs> you know just give me Give me what I, give me whatever, stimulate me a little bit, you know, just throw me a stimulus package, you know? So there's that flip side, but I'm, I'm focusing more on the other side of the coin. Well, many are one shifting their consciousness about the dependency on something outside of themselves for them to live and thrive Two, shifting their consciousness around wellness. And again, depending on other things and people outside of themselves and nature to help them to be well. And then three, shifting their consciousness about, I mean, shifting fear. Fear is being dismantled because many are realizing once everything was taken away and, and after dealing with, uh, dealing with dis-ease and illness in these last couple years and not having not being able to just run to the doctor, run to the hospital, run to the whatever, because many of them were not accepting unless you're on, you're pretty much on your deathbed because of the, um, the, 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 I don't know. I keep changing what I keep calling it, but I will not call it by its name, but y'all know what I'm the bug. I keep calling it the great bug. <laughs> unless you're on your deathbed, they weren't really accepting you. And then you used to making a doctor's appointment and going into the office to have somebody to help you to take care of your whatever you're dealing with. But nowadays, you they won't even accept you in the office. They'll say, okay, we're going to see you on a Zoom call. Thank God many people are not really... They, they I guess common sense would tell them, okay, a Zoom call ain't going to really help me do nothing. I could just go to, and a lot of people are going to, natural herbalists, natural health food stores, natural health food stores, uh, um, um, clientele is raising tremendously. Um, naturopathic doctors are seeing a, a, a great, you know, increase in clientele, you know, so there's this great shift happening. And the beautiful thing is because of this great shift in consciousness, there is right now, developing this great shift in reality because your consciousness creates reality so that leads me to so so and there that that if 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 we have numbers droves of people shift have a shift in consciousness and what they what is consciousness what you believe what you perceive what you think what you what you know what you have faith in what you believe that's that's your consciousness okay so it depends on what I can tell. If I if you have a life full of struggle and trouble and lack and this and that, that tells me your state of consciousness. You have a you have a lack state of consciousness. You have a doubtful or fearful state of consciousness. And so you have people who are now having a divine state of consciousness. In their mind, they are divine beings having a a a a, 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 a physical experience. And so as divine beings. Um, I have access to infinite potential, infinite opportunity. I have access to infinite, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, divine guidance. If I just tune in, tap in, I can be divinely guided into which way I should go in my life. I am divinely protected. I am divinely provided for all of these different types of things. And they're there in their mindset. And so in their mindset, their work is to stay in that mindset. Not to try to figure everything out, try to make everything happen, not to force everything. I, my work is to stay in this mindset and see it through because I know my consciousness creates reality. I know my words create reality. I know my thoughts create reality. I know my feelings and my emotions create reality. So my work is to stay in a divine space and I'm going to stay there. And then in my divine space, as I'm divinely guided, I'm going to be obedient I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to be affirmative. I'm going to be prayerful. I'm going to consistently pray, uh, watch and pray. That's my job. And I'm on my job. A part of my job is also to take care of my temple. 
I'm going to take care of my temple uh, because this is what what it all happens through. So let me take care of my temple. And that that's, that's their state of being. More and more people we have like that, it becomes a new earth. Because in an old way, many, many walk this land in a mindset of, in a, in a, uh, from a mindset of lackful consciousness, lack mindset, fearful mindset, um, dependency, victimhood. Um, we can name so many and I'm not, I, I, I wasn't immune to the conditioning. And I grew up in the Western world, so I can only speak of the Western world. In the Western world, you come out the womb being inundated and conditioned to be fearful, to force, not flow, to, to take on an identity instead of remember your identity or uh, be revealed your identity in this world. You've been convinced that there's an identity that you need to learn instead of allowing your identity to be revealed to you. And so you take on these identities for so long in life until you get sick and tired, literally, you know, sick and tired. And maybe you say, okay, there has to be something better than this. There must be something greater than this. And then you go on this journey that many are on like literally right now. <laughs> <laughs> and gratefully, we're in a beautiful time to be alive because what's happening cosmically and in even the Earth's core is on your side if you begin to take that journey or if you're in that journey. And many who started this journey years ago are seeing quantum leaps in, in, uh, in insight and in divine insight and in divine understanding in thus in shifting consciousness and shifts in their reality and so before when it took them uh five ten years to understand something to manifest something to to evolve in a way it's happening twinkling of an eye, in a twinkle of an eye literally in a twinkling of an eye overnight you know not long at all one conversation one prayer one one devotion period one like it's literally like i'm, I'm a new person and that's the signs of the time. That's what time it is. And again, there's a flip side. So depending on what a per where a person is in consciousness, there's a quantum leap in decline. So it's it's like domino effect, you know, health failed, you know, finances failed, you know, life life just life is just, you know, upside down. It just really depends on where you are in consciousness where you're going to get your quantum leaps. And so um, I give thanks because I I've been put in a place and in a position where I'm experiencing the high side of it. So I'm seeing so many people, you know, on that positive end of it. So, you know, they're seeing quantum leaps in consciousness. They're seeing so many different things shift and change in their lives. They're getting healthier. They're getting wealthier. They're getting, you know, um, um, they're evolving so much. They're understanding life so much better. They're like, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to experience that. Like that, that's literally all I see all the time. That's all I see, um, on a, on a close and, you know, in a close proximity manner. But I do also see the other side, you know, and I just continuously, I continuously one, stay on my job so that I can be a light so that I can be an inspiration so that, I can do my job, <laughs> you know, what I suppose, what I've been called to do so that I can teach, so that I can, you know, um, practice the, 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 the gifts and talents that the Most High has given me. Um, but I also just keep everybody in my prayers. I continuously pray that we continuously, you know, that, that more and more of us um, experience a raise in consciousness and thus a, a shift in reality. And so... Um, I give thanks for this space and time right now. And I pray that if you're tuned in right now, either watching live or as a replay, that you consider this. Um, your consciousness, your thoughts, what you imagine, what you're, what you're thinking, what you're speaking, what you're meditating on, what you're, 
what you have in the mind and in your heart, how you're feeling, it all creates your reality. It all creates your reality. And so, you know, we are in a blessed time to be alive no matter what it seems like. And so even if you've experienced depression, you know, um, lack or any of these things over the years for a long, long time, it doesn't have to remain. Change your thinking. You know, if you don't understand how or how to do that and, you know, get support, get help. Because the beautiful thing is, is more and more people who are in a role to, in a, in a position to be able to support you on your journey. And oftentimes it's not necessarily quote unquote professional therapy, um, not to bash therapy. You know, I have many of my clients also have um, has a therapist and with our work together it's very helpful for them but there are many who can support in coaching you to help you to think about life differently perceive life a little bit differently and not only differently but the key thing is that's why i said sometimes professional therapy is not really the answer the key thing is the difference is think about it from a divine space a higher space Oftentimes, the earthbound modalities like professional therapy ends up having you still thinking very earthbound because it's not they're, they're not necessarily teaching you um, or helping you to understand your spirituality, your the reality that you are a spiritual being, a divine being. They're not they're, that's not what they're there for. Now they can help you to think through things differently, process things differently, but on a higher plane, it's not only you're processing things differently, you're processing things as if you are a divine being. So there are certain things, like for instance, the notion of good and bad. When you truly understand the reality of God, when you understand divinity, this notion of good and bad, it goes out the door. And that's huge. That's huge. <laughs> because good and bad creates this hierarchy and judgment or conditions to life that attaches expectations, emotions, perceptions, and all these things to experiences in life. Because it traps you in this judgment cycle that is don't really have that much. It doesn't really matter like that. What it does is it can start to, if you judge something good or judge something bad, it can start to create and it impacts your reality greatly. I hope I'm clear. So if you throw out the notion of if it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, all you're considering is it, does this feel like it's in alignment with me? Does it feel like this is for my greatest good? Does this feel like this is something that's contributing to my life on a deeper plane? This is, is it helping me to, if it's helping me to achieve joy, peace, happiness, abundance, that is it alignment or is it not? If you can stay there, then you can focus more on what really matters. And that is your alignment with your greatest good. And that is with your alignment with what's meant for you in life everyone has their own unique destiny everyone has their own unique experience everyone has their own unique bloodline even everybody in the bloodline like has a own unique you know um synergy or synchronicity when it comes to their bloodline and so there's a destiny that's for you so that means there's a a a, 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 a blueprint of alignment that's literally just for you and you can gauge whether something is in alignment by how you feel by what you're seeing manifest in your life by if you're experiencing joy peace happiness or are you experiencing uh sadness anger fear resentment guilt shame you know um stagnation procrastination you know so many different things or are you experiencing flow and advancement and elevation and understanding and clarity and lightheartedness and peace and all of these beautiful things that many times in this western world we've just seen those as luxuries and we're just happy when we feel it 
We experience those things on vacation or when we have some time off. But that is the our natural state of being. So we're constantly outside of our natural state of being, constantly. We're constantly out of alignment, constantly. This topic has so many subtopics, but I want to just focus on this point here. That if you get clear about this truth, that consciousness creates reality. Consciousness. The way you perceive life, the way you think about life, the way you feel about life, the way you speak about life creates your reality. And so it is essential for your focus to be on your processing of life. How do you perceive life in your experiences? What are your beliefs? Are they in alignment with your happiness, joy, peace, prosperity, growth, elevation? What are the, the mindsets and habits that you have taken on and that you practice? And are they in alignment? It's this, this, we're, we're not talking about moral character, good or bad. Da, 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 da. Why I say that? Because there are some things we do in life, some things that are habits in our life, some t- things that we believe and some things that we hold on to that could be perceived to be morally good, but they're not in alignment with our peace, power, joy, rest, restoration, recovery. empowerment, confidence, is not in alignment with that. It could be morally good. Some people may say, oh man, you're such a noble person. You're such a such a good person. You're just so good. You're just so good. Is it in alignment? I know plenty of people. I have met plenty of people doing great things and they're not in alignment. How do I know? Because they're, they are not happy. They are not experiencing joy. They are stagnant. They, they are not... They're, they're, they feel stuck, they feel trapped, they feel, you know, they don't feel free, you know, so I know, play, but they're doing great things, morally, that's not what we're talking about here, we're talking about alignment, alignment is different than moral character, spiritual character is different than moral character, spiritual character says, I am going to, to be of high spiritual character, says, I am going to practice my faith, Prove my faith, practice my faith, my knowing. I am going to stay under the guidance of divine mind, of my divine mind, my divine intellect, my divine guidance. I am going to be loyal and obedient to that which spirit leads me to do that's right for me, which I know is right for me because it lines up with my peace, power, joy, and all the things that we can, you know, that are synonyms to that. <laughs> um and I'm going to stay faithful in that. And my will, I'm going to submit to that divinity, that divine mind. I'm going to submit my will to my divine mind, my zeal, my efforts, my time, my energy to my divine mind. That is divinely guiding me to stay in alignment what's with what's right for me. What righteousness is for me, which is basically what's right for you is your righteousness. You are not practicing righteousness if you are not in alignment with what's right for you it hasn't it's not anything with more character more character is good it can help you to maybe get in alignment it could contribute to your alignment but it, ha- it don't, it's not that moral character piece which we have been inundated with be good be right be this be that remember we're throwing out good and bad we're saying is it in alignment So focusing our energy on understanding alignment, understanding consciousness, understanding where our thoughts come from, where our mindsets, how are they being created, um, processing our emotions, understanding why are we fearful, what are we fearful about, understanding that you're even fearful. Oftentimes when I'm doing, when I'm working with clients, we have to first take some time to really realize what are you, where are you vibrationally? 
Sometimes people don't know that they are fearful. They don't know that they're sad. They don't know that they're angry. They don't know that they feel powerless. They or they they don't acknowledge it. They they work to be confident, but really what the work has to be is to uproot the seed of powerlessness. And that seed may have come from something that they bury that they don't no longer are conscious about or something they don't know is creating this feeling of powerlessness. So that's why, you know, I'm really encouraging more and more, like, focus your attention, your intention, your work, your mind on understanding your being, understanding what does it mean that you are this energetic, spiritual, divine being. What does that mean, right? And then, okay, you're that and you're having a human experience. So that comes with emotions, thoughts, agree, you know, mindsets, all these different things. And because you are this spiritual, energetic being and you are this conscious being as well, a human, then you have these thoughts and these, these feelings and all this stuff. And it, it links up with your consciousness. It links up with energy. It links up with spirit and it creates it's the beautiful thing about being alive. Beautiful thing about being a human is we 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 do have a mind. We have we we do think. We have a consciousness. We do feel. We imagine. We dream. We we do all of these powerful things. But if all of these powerful things are matched up with the lack consciousness, you're going to produce lack. If all of these dreams, thoughts, words, perceptions, beliefs, all of these things are linked up with fear, with the consciousness of fear, a consciousness where fear has been planted, lack has been planted, despair has been planted, guilt has been planted, shame has been planted, which it has been planted in this society through religion, through the news, through school, through through the, the system of hierarchy, through the stories we've been told, through the stories we continue to tell ourselves, through the stories that our families have told us, through the stories that our family continue to tell, through all of these narratives, through all of these different things, these seeds have been planted in our consciousness that we are not great beings. We are lackful. We are, we have to work hard to get anything. We have to, you know, um, don't believe it unless you see it, you know, and, and, uh, you must be logical and you must be reasonable. And that spirituality is just a pseudoscience and, oh, that's not something to believe. And so believe it or not, many have been conditioned to be pes pessimist, to be doubtful, to be fearful, to be um, over emotional, or I should say, to have a lack of control of their emotions. You've been conditioned to be that. Conditioned. For instance, like this whole, like I remember just being in school as a child, having these, you know, a counselor come around with this chart. How do you feel? Explore your feelings. And then as a teacher, I saw the same thing. Like, you know, not really teaching children about feelings for real. And how to govern your emotions, how to process your emotions in a divine way, because school separated from quote unquote religion and definitely separated. Schooling definitely didn't have a spiritual component to it. We definitely didn't have that if you went to public school. Now, if you went to an independent school, and specifically like a school like my son, an African centered school, then spiritual was embedded in it. It's, it's a part of it. Spirituality is a part of it, and not spirituality and that how we see it on the ground. It's like just spirituality, the fact that you are a divine being, you don't have to use those words to teach that to children. It's other words you can use. It don't have to be that complex to help them to understand that your thoughts create, your words create, you know? How you feel is important for you to govern your feelings because if you allow your emotions and your feelings to get away from you, then your your cre what you're creating gets away from you. This topic is so big. This topic is so big. This topic is so big. But essentially, without me going on and on forever, I just really feel compelled this AM in this reflection to encourage us to focus our energy. Focus, okay? Focus. We are in a time of a rising of a new earth. 
that rising of the new earth is happening because of shifts in consciousness. And there are two sides to the coin on this thing. Your consciousness could be shifted higher where you're becoming aware of your beingness, where you're becoming aware of life, where you're becoming aware that, you know, you have some, this is higher power piece, where you have this higher power, you have this nudging, you have this higher mind, you have this, this, this uh, intuition, you have this, either you're being raised there in consciousness and you're now creating and you're, you're putting forth the effort to understand that and to flow with that or you have in a shift in consciousness that is a decline where you're becoming more and more fearful you're becoming more and more dependent upon something outside of yourself and thus becoming more and more expectant and expectant of things outside of you and being greatly disappointed and with that disappointment you're becoming more and more um sad, mad, scared, uh, um, in despair, you know, and on the decline that, that just leads to decline. And you got to be careful because when you when you, your, your consciousness is on a decline, everything in your life begins to decline. Your health, your wealth, your material things, your everything begins to decline. So be careful, be careful. And on the other side, the more and more you raise up in all of those different things, the more and more everything raises up. You raise up in consciousness, everything increases. Okay? And so I pray this was a word that was resonant to someone listening in. I pray that we continue to allow ourselves to experience a shift and a raise up in consciousness. Allow our hearts and our minds to be open allow for spirit to lead us in the way that we should go in our spiritual studies uh in our care for our temples in our efforts in our evolvement you know our shifts in our lives i pray that we are courageous enough to listen to that intuitive um, knowledge that is or intuitive intelligence that divine intelligence that keeps nudging us to do certain things I pray that we are courageous enough to be obedient, knowing that we are taken care of. I pray that we are brave in our steps. I pray that we move forward in consciousness uh, and in awareness, knowing that we are good, we are taken care of, everything is always working out for us. And I pray that we all experience the bliss, the glory, the joy of what many are calling the new earth. I pray that we experience ultimate wellness, the, the, the best wellness that we've ever experienced in our lives, the best things that we've ever experienced in our lives, the greatest thoughts, the greatest inspiration. I pray that we stay motivated and we stay inspired as each day go by. I pray that we allow for the, 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 the best of the Almighty to be created through us, through our thoughts, through our actions, through our words, through our works. I pray that we're able to allow that to happen by being courageous and staying on our divine assignments. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Oh, all right, y'all. Peace and love. It's nice outside here in the ATL. So I'm about to get outside and here in these ATL streets. Okay, not really in the streets, but maybe in the trail or on a path somewhere or at the farmer's market. <laughs> Grab me some for the week. But I'm um, going to enjoy the sun. So. I pray this was a word and um, peace and love. Oh, don't forget, we're going to have a special meditation, motivation and meditation session next Sunday, April the 17th. In honor of what many celebrate as Easter, we're going to talk about the metaphysical meaning, the deeper meaning of Easter, and we're going to have a powerful uh, meditation and whatever is is uh, channeled that day, we're going to do that and uh, tune in to that energy because it is a powerful energy uh, that doesn't really have anything to do with religion. Um, but there are religious, you know, religious, religious practices connected to that, that energy. But we're going to take full advantage of that energy. So tune in no matter what religion you are, no matter what color, creed, age, whatever. Tune in. It's going to be a powerful meditation. And you can register for it at the link in bio. All right. Peace and love, y'all.